if you're the proud owner of a Ford Escape and you'd like to go from this to this, then stick around and I'll show you how I'm doing it. I'm putting this in my brother's vehicle and he said he bought this on eBay for $118. It comes with the hitch, this little install sheet, and a bag of hardware. Based on the installation instructions, it looks like a pro can do it in 40 minutes, a novice can do it in 80. So hopefully an hour and a half from now we'll be done with this project. Tools needed are a ratchet, torque wrench, pry bar, a couple different sizes of sockets, a rotary tool, and a wire brush. Alright, let's get this vehicle jacked up and get started. Under the car now, and on each side of the muffler there's a nearly identical hanger just like this there will be two bolts in each one that you take out they're 13 millimeters so far the instructions are proving to be not helpful and just flat out wrong after you've removed the two bolts on each side of the muffler the next step is to go in a little bit deeper and there's a rubber hanger on the driver's side right here and you're going to want to spray this with some soapy water or really anything that's going to lube it and you're going to pull this metal stud out of that rubber which will allow the exhaust to hang down and give us a little bit more room to work back up here along the frame. Well hopefully you guys caught that. There we go. You can see I did get the mount removed and now all this is just kind of hanging here giving this a lot more room to get in there and work. The next step is to trim a portion of this heat shield off. If you look at it, there's actually almost a line formed in it right here. You're going to cut off following this line straight back along here. If you want, you can remove this 10 millimeter nut and fold this whole thing down. But it looks like there's plenty of room just to get your tin snips up in here and cut it with it in place. Like I said though, if you want to fold it down, go ahead, or I mean pull that nut out. That's what the instructions said to do, but I really don't see why you would need to do that. Well, sorry, I forgot to push record. You're gonna do the exact same thing, except on the passenger side, I just snipped the whole thing off. It's actually a lot shorter than on the driver's side because the filler next to the gas tank come down here. And actually, I really think if you didn't have tin snips, you could probably almost use scissors to cut this off. It's pretty much heavy duty tin foil. The next step is going to be to enlarge this hole in the frame. All the hardware passes through that hole, and you can see it just doesn't quite fit in there. There's a couple different ways you can enlarge that. If you have one of these air body saws, you can use one of these. I hate them, so I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be using my die grinder with a burr on there, or you could use a Dremel. And there you go. Fits right through now. You will have to do this on both sides. In the kit you will find these little fish wires. One side's got a coil, pretty much like a spring on it, and then it's just a long wire. So you take the fish wire and the bolt and you literally just thread the thing into it. That simple. Make sure you thread it in there all the way. You don't want the stupid bolt coming off up inside the frame rail. That would be probably less than ideal. Don't forget to put your little tabs on. If you forget to put this tab on, you're going to be kicking yourself. So the first one we're going to do is this hole up here in the side. You see that little hole right there? It's the first bolt we're going to put in. To get to it, we're going to take our fish wire through this hole, the big hole here, and just kind of run it along over there until it comes out there, right there, until it comes out that hole. Grab your fish wire, pull the whole contraption right up through there. Might have to help jiggle it up through a little bit. That was surprisingly easy. Holy cow. I was a little apprehensive. I had to take the spacer off the bolt to get it through that hole. And I thought maybe I'd make the hole big enough, but once I got it up to where it went, it went right in place. And if you need to bend these, get some kind of like a little bit of a hook in there. Do whatever you need to to make them go around the corners like you need. Push the 
tab up inside the hole. Put the bolt up inside the hole. There you have it. Then for the last one, you're just going to push your bolt up through the hole. Then push the tab up behind it. And pull it back down. And there you have it. We've got these three bolts done. I'm going to go to the passenger side, do the exact same thing. And then we'll lift the hitch up into place. Now that you've got all six bolts in, you're ready to install the hitch. Before you do, you're going to need to push the two side ones back into the frame rail. They'll be in the way when the hitch comes up if they're sticking out. You'll probably need to get a hand for this or a floor jack or some way to help support the hitch as you're doing this. You're going to raise the hitch mostly up into place and then you're going to feed the fish wires through the corresponding holes in the hitch that they go through. Then raise the hitch up all the way, remove the wires and put the nuts on. Once you've got the hitch up in place and all the bolts pulled through, the next step is to remove the fish wires. And you're going to want to have some sort of tension on these bolts so they don't fall through. Right now the hitch is currently trying to come down. It's hanging on that bolt, I guess, if you will. So that's going to hold it in place while I start this nut. Clearly, if you lose those inside the frame at this point, it's going to be a huge headache trying to get them back. So just be mindful of that when you're doing this. And just take the fish wire off the next one and repeat the process for all six of the bolts. And like here, if you want to go get a screwdriver or something, I'm just reusing the heat shield I cut off. I'm just going to put some a little bit of side pressure on that bolt so it stays put when I go to thread this nut on and I don't push it up inside. The last step is going to be to torque the six bolts to 70 foot-pounds. At least that's what my instruction sheet says, 70. I'm probably going to want to double check yours and make sure it says the same. You can see I've put the bolts back in for the muffler brackets just to make sure I don't accidentally get them covered up with the hitch and then have to redo this process. So now I've got the six bolts tightened, three on each side. I torqued them to 70 foot pounds like I said. I'm probably going to go ahead and redo that after I pull a trailer, you know, four or five times or something like that. Go ahead and recheck it make sure it hasn't worked its way loose. The next step is going to be to remove these bolts that hold the muffler up, push the muffler back up, reconnect that mount up here that we took off with the soapy water, reconnect that, put the four bolts back in that hold this on, and you're done. It was a pretty straightforward install. This one was off eBay. Like I said, it was a hundred and, I don't know, 20 bucks or so. It's a knockoff of the Kurt. It appears to be anyway. Honestly, I'd probably just go ahead and buy the Kurt if you were going to do this install. There's a couple fitment issues, some bolt holes barely lining up, um, you know, typical Chinese crap. Overall though, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. I would say the instructions were right. We took our sweet time and I was filming it obviously and I easily got it done in an hour and a half. I'll have another video coming up in the next couple months probably installing the wiring harness for this. That's going to be a little bit involved as well. It is a pretty much just a plug and play kit but I do have to run one hot wire all the way from the front. So I'm not gonna tackle that tonight, it's getting kinda late. But if you're interested in that, please stick around, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.